Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, in a recent video, I shared the story of Rear Admiral David Farragut at the Battle of Mobile Bay. His words, paraphrased as, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, is part of America's naval history. In fact, it is only one of two distinct, very human stories connected to the battle in August of 1864. The other involves the loss of Farragut's lead vessel, which was a brand new single turreted ironclad called the Tecumseh. It struck an underwater mine known in Civil War vernacular as a torpedo very early in the action. The commander of this iron giant, Tunis Augustus McDonough Craven, lies at the heart of the second story. And another memorable quote. Craven was a native of New Hampshire. He was known as an affable, genial man, very popular with his fellow officers and the crew. He believed that the Tecumseh, the classic ironclad monitor-style ship, and other vessels of the class were relatively unsafe. But when he was offered command of the Tecumseh, he couldn't resist. He set aside his misgivings and obeying orders, and in the interest of the service, he accepted the assignment. Farragut, meanwhile, was super anxious to have the Tecumseh lead the column into the attack at Mobile Bay. He was so he so much desired to have the Tecumseh in the lead that he postponed the planned attack for a few days while he awaited the arrival of the vessel, which was coming from the Atlantic coast. So now we'll go to the battle. The battle starts 6.47 a.m. The honor of firing the first shot goes to Craven and his crew. Less than an hour later, the Tecumseh strikes that submerged mine in an underwater field that was planted by enemy troops. A large hole was blown through the bottom and it spelled the ship's doom. Topside in the very cramped conning tower stood Craven and his pilot. The exchange between these two men is remembered for Craven's chivalry that gentlemanly courtesy as the vessel was rapidly sinking in a swirling vortex of water. In fact, according to some, some accounts, it took only 30 seconds for the ship to sink, others a couple of minutes. Craven's words are recorded as, after you pilot, which he said to John Collins, who was the pilot, and Collins was at the base of the ladder leading to the narrow opening of the tower. History has largely filtered out the moments immediately before and after Craven's noble gesture, which results in the loss of context and, in fact, twists the words just a little bit. Let me give you a few examples that give you some different, uh, different context around those fateful words. In the 1888 landmark series, Battles and Leaders of the Civil War, Pilot Collins, who, by the way, survived, describes what happened after the exchange with Craven. He says, when I reached the utmost round of the ladder, the vessel seemed to drop under me. And with it went the commander and 93 of his crewmen. This observation lends credence to the eyewitness account of how quickly the ironclad sunk. There's another account much earlier in February of 1865 in a magazine called The Seaman's Friend. This sets the stage for the encounter between Craven and Pilot Collins. It also includes a variation of Craven's words, those words most often quoted after you pilot. The commander Craven, quote, was in the pilot house with the pilot as the vessel went down. Each moved instinctively to the ladder when the gallant captain stepped one side, exclaiming, you first, sir. The pilot rushed down the ladder, got out, and was saved. Now, there's one more account, an 1879 account of the encounter that offers another version of events. It appears in 
a, a publication called A Sketch of the Battle of Mobile Bay by, by William F. Hutchinson, who was an assistant surgeon of one of the ships, the sloop Lackawanna. According to Hutchinson, quote, Captain Craven was already partly out when the pilot, that's Collins, grasped him by the leg and cried, let me get out first, Captain, for God's sake, I have five little children. The captain, according to Hutchinson's account, drew back, saying, go on, sir, gave him his place and went down with the ship while the pilot was saved. Now, I want to share one more version of you, and it appears as a poem. It appeared in August 1898 in Atlantic Monthly Magazine, right as the Spanish-American War was ended. As you students of military history know, the Spanish-American War dealing very much with naval history and naval warfare, and so a look back at history seemed more than appropriate. There's this poem published in the Atlantic. It's called A Craven. And the author is an Englishman, Henry Newbolt. It includes these verses that echo accounts that I'm assuming came from or were adapted from that magazine account in Seaman's Friend and Battles and Leaders. Here's a couple of verses from the poem. Into the narrowing channel between the shore and the sunk torpedoes lying in treacherous rank, she turned out but a yard too short, a muffled roar, a mountainous wave, and she rolled, righted, and sank. Over the manhole, up in the ironclad tower, pilot and captain met as they turned to fly. The hundredth part of a moment seemed an hour, for one could pass to be saved, and one must die. They stood like men in a dream. Craven spoke, spoke as he lived and fought with a captain's pride. After you, pilot, the pilot woke, down the ladder he went, and Craven died. Two years later, in 1900, the U.S. Navy commissioned the torpedo boat Craven. It's the first of three vessels named for the other hero of Mobile Bay. I should point out that Farragut and Craven, if you think of them as protagonists, they're both celebrated as heroes. One, Farragut, as a profile of courage, looking out across the fleet attacking Mobile Bay in the well-remembered battle, uttering those words, whether he said them or not, we can certainly talk about the paraphrasing and how they were said, if they were said at all. But they point to him as being the hero, the captain who's much in command, taking chances on the rigging of his ship, the USS Hartford. It is, as I mentioned, a profile in courage. The other Craven story, which is largely forgotten, is one of chivalry, one of honor, one of being obedient, one of putting the men of your command before you. Of course, both of them involve underwater mines or torpedoes during the period when the enemy, the Confederacy, had planted these underwater mines all across the channel in Mobile Bay, which of course was not peculiar to Mobile Bay. They were planted in many other rivers and places during the naval war, during the larger civil war. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode.